Hey hey and welcome to the channel of that burn guy. This is my new guide for tips of the month contest, the techniques for using rulers and special rulers guide. And basically this is going to be a full guide to all the rulers present in Clip Studio. We'll review every ruler, their preferences and the ways of using. Chapter 1. Ways of adding and editing of rulers. First of all, we need to understand how to start working with rulers. And there are several ways to proceed. 1.1. Add a ruler. The main way of adding rulers is to open the ruler sub-window and add the rulers to the canvas by selecting the one you need. Pay attention to the layer you are currently on. The rulers will be placed on the selected layer, though you can easily move them to a different one by simply dragging the ruler icon from one layer to another. 1.2. Edit rulers. In the upper menu you can find the layer, ruler frame sub-menu which gives you access to many rulers related actions. And so you can create a selection from your ruler, delete it, make it visible or invisible, make it visible on all layers because by default it can be seen on the layer the ruler is on only, and many other things. Although these functions are combined with several functions for working with frames, like divide frame borders equally and combine frames. You can also access the same window by clicking the right button on the mouse on any layer. The ruler frame bar will be there as well. 1.3. Snapping. These three buttons on your screens are essential if you want to work with the rulers. They are located in the quick access upper bar and I recommend you to keep the first and the second ones activated all the time. Here's what they do. While the first button is activated, your strokes will work with standard rulers and will be snapped to them. And the second button makes the same for the special rulers. If they are deactivated, none of your strokes will notice the rulers on the layer. The third button does the same for the grid tool. We will get back to it a bit later. Chapter 2. Main rulers. Now let's take a closer look at the rulers themselves. 2.1. Linear ruler. This might be the simplest ruler among all. You build it by simply clicking on the place you need and dragging the mouse while holding the button. And so you create a line your strokes will stick to. There are plenty of ways to use it. But the main goal you reach with this ruler is a perfect line. Strict and straight line. 2.2. Curve ruler. With this ruler you can place several dots of the ruler path, so they make a curved and complex shape. This is a perfect tool for those who are not good at drawing long and smooth curves. 2.3. Figure ruler. Just like the whole figure sub window, this ruler consists of prepared shapes for your convenience. Regretfully, people can hardly draw perfect shapes like circle with their bare hands, so this ruler is a savior. Here you can choose from ellipse circle, square rectangle and polygon rounded polygon. Such shapes like rectangle and rounded polygon can be customized. For example, you can control the level of their corners rounded. Two point four, ruler pen, a stable brush that draws with the rulers. A nice tool for cases when you need to draw perfectly same paths, but on different layers and with different brushes. In case the vector functionality doesn't give you what you need. The post-correction switch regulates the level of the ruler smoothened after you finish drawing it. 2.5. Special Ruler Special Ruler is a set of unique rulers that will save you up to hours of work. The list of it starts with the parallel line. When you place it on your canvas, you will see three parallel lines. But those are not the ruler's borders. Now you can actually draw parallel lines across the whole canvas. And this three-line look just helps you to define it among others. Parallel Curve Basically, this is the same ruler, but mixed with the regular curve ruler. So now you can draw complex, curved and parallel lines across the canvas. By the way, with this ruler, the program allows you to choose its shape. Will the corners be sharp, smooth, or will you draw them using the quadratic bezier aspects? Multiple curve. Once again, this is the same ruler as the previous one, but with some additions. For example, now the ruler recognizes when it makes a turn, and so it will make an effect of bending. Amazing decision for drawing hair, ropes and ribbons. Radial line. Basically a dot that makes all your strokes lead towards it. A great option for drawing light source or manga slash comics action effects. Radial curve. An interesting combination of the standard curve and the radial line. Now you can build your own path, the stroke will go towards the radial point. Concentric circle. With this ruler you can build a circle or an ellipse of any shape and draw multiple parallel and perfect in terms of each other shapes. They will have a common center and so they will lie perfectly on the canvas. 2.6. Perspective Ruler 
a ruler that most artists always use. You can put limitless number of points and draw amazing and physically correct landscapes, architecture concepts and other drawings. And you can also end this ruler through the mentioned ruler frame bar, but only at one, two or three points ruler at a time. The main difference between a one-point perspective ruler and the radial line ruler is that you still can draw in different directions with the perspective one. 2.7. Symmetrical ruler. Another artist's favorite. Create wonderful patterns using up to 16 pieces symmetry and implement them into your artwork. For example, you can quickly draw just two, three different butterflies and distort them in a way they look like dozens of different ones. Chapter 3. Guide Ruler Although you can find the guide ruler in the same list of rulers, I skipped it on purpose because I wanted to talk about it a bit more. So, one of the most demanded functions we all want to see in Clip Studio Paint is centering or positioning of objects, relatively other objects and the canvas. Regretfully, we have no idea when this system parameter will be added to the program and thus it causes a certain discomfort, especially if you're a logo or a merch designer. But while we are waiting for it to be added, I'd like to share a small tip that involves the guide rulers. First, add at least two of them to your workspace. You can do this from the create ruler tool, sure, but there is a faster way if you need only one or two. To use this method make sure that the main side ruler is activated and simply drag the guide ruler from it. Like you can see here. The guide ruler is also available from the special ruler list. Once done, you will notice that the guide ruler can only be perfectly vertical and horizontal, and that it is endless. Now comes the fun part. Due to its nature, you can control the position of this ruler on the canvas. Go to the operation window and click on this ruler. You will notice three new bars in the tool property window that represent the axis and the angle. Since our canvas is 5K on 5K, set the center X on the vertical guide and the center Y on the horizontal guide to 2500. Now they cross in the center of the canvas. I took the butterfly from earlier to demonstrate to you how it works. You should simply put the image in a way a small cross in its center lies perfectly on the crossroad of the guide rulers. There is an important note. If your canvas has an even number of pixels, you will have a one pixel error since the canvas simply doesn't have this middle pixel. And that's all. 
Now your object is located perfectly in the center, and you can do the same trick if you need to locate it perfectly in any other part of the work. Simply choose the needed pixel of crossing. And if you have any doubts about the fact the object is centered, you can switch the grid on and make sure the distances from the opposite edges of the canvas to the borders of the objects are identical. It should also be mentioned that the guide rulers can be deactivated, meaning they will still be visible, but they will not make your strokes follow them. Simply press on this tiny button and your ruler will change its color, which means it has been deactivated. Chapter 4. Grid. And since we have already turned the grid on, let us talk about it as well since it can also be deemed as a ruler. Here are several ways of how we can work with it. 1. Remember the three snapping buttons? Get back to them and activate the third one. From now on, all your strokes will deem the grid as a ruler and will go according to its lines. 2. You can move the grid along with the side ruler by opening the Move Layer, Move Grid window and dragging it. You can customize your grid, as well as other rulers, in the File, Preferences, Ruler Unit window. There you can choose the colors the active and non-active rulers, grid, etc. will have, as well as you can change the opacity of all rulers. 4. In the View, Grid Ruler settings you can choose the positioning of the grid, the sizes of its cells, the gap parameter, and the number of the divisions each cell has. Although there are not so many of them in the Assets catalog, you can still find some extremely useful and interesting rulers made by Clip Studio users. Here is a couple of those I got interested in while searching. The first one is rather simple but elegant. It is a flower-like ruler. With this in your arsenal, you can draw simple petals or patterns since it makes an interesting volume effect if you draw through the whole ruler. The second one is so massive I couldn't believe something like this could have existed. At a first glance, it might look like a typical box that represents a shape of a room. But if we turn the visibility of the rulers on, you will see that this room is a perfect field of perspective with a whole grid of active rulers. On top of that, if you scroll down to the layouts, you will see that all its elements are customizable. These red and blue lines are in fact 3D objects that can be used as a hint for objects you want to place in your room. The walls and the ceiling can be moved and changed in sizes, as well as the room's area. This material is a perfect combination of two of Clip Studio's unique advantages – a diverse set of rulers and the 3D object's workspace. Conclusion As you can see, the ways of using the rulers are limited by your imagination only. I hope my ruler's full guide was interesting and my examples of using were clear. See you soon in a new guide. Thank you for your time and I wish you a great inspiration.